Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Good to see all of you here this day on the sanctuary and also at home. Um, you do know that uh, Valentine's uh, comes from a patron saint of Catholic Church, St. Valentine. Um, how commercial got a hold of it and made it what it is today, you know, who knows. Anyways, everybody that came into the sanctuary this morning got a nice uh, pretzel in the shape of a heart, Valentine. Uh, we wish we could do it for those at home or Zoom, but uh, sorry, can't. Um, do we usually try to do something um, for Valentine's Day here every year with uh, Donna's leading and help? Good to see all of you and glad that uh, the weather did not hit the way they were threatening us. Uh, it's very good that uh, we have a time to be together. We'll begin our worship service with our prelude. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God and whoever loves others is a child of God. God has showed us what is good, to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Our first hymn is number 649. light is streaming, shadows of doubt are vanished away. See in this place our fears and our dreaming, brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and the sainted, gather us in the spirits and flame. Call us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the old, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history. 
called to be light for the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us the heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we receive here we receive the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us a new peace of the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is good. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion. Lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not just in buildings small and unmighty, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place, a little light is shining. Now is our presence and now is a day. Gather us in that hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in all people together. Fire of love is our flesh and our home. Maybe see it. God is with us. Christ is with us, and their Holy Spirit is with us. O eternal God, companion of all who seek you, draw near to us so that we may draw near to you. Grant us the grace to love others as you love them. Enable us to serve you according to your holy will. Grant us the true freedom which is found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, we know that you love us. We know that you have called us to live the fullness of the life you've given us. But around us and even within us, we see the brokenness of this world. Our accomplishments leave us empty and unsatisfied. Forgive our neglect of your word and ways, our lack of sensitivity to the needs of those around us, and our failure to daily feed the spirit that is within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Since we are justified by faith alone, in that faith we can find peace with God and forgiveness of all our sins. Through Jesus Christ alone do we find the grace, hope, and joy that comes from sharing with others the glory of God. Let us join in the act of praise. From all that dwell upon the earth, let the Creator's praise arise. Alleluia, less alleluia. Let the Redeemer's name be sung, enabling God's spirit to be free each tongue. Alleluia, truly alleluia. Eternally is your glory, O God. For your eternal word we give you laud. Alleluia. We shout, Alleluia. Eternal Holy Spirit, we adore. Your praises we shout, shore to shore. Alleluia. O oh, eternal Alleluia. Glory to God and to His sons and to the Holy Spirit, three in one. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever be forevermore. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Glory to God, Glory to God, Glory in the highest, Glory to God, Glory to God, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Good morning. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from the beautiful prophecy of Hosea, the second chapter, verses 14 through 20. But I will court my people once more and bring them out into the wilderness. There I will speak tenderly to them. I will give them back their vineyards and transform their valley of troubles into a place of hope. They will respond to me, singing with joy as in days of their youth, after I had freed them from captivity in Egypt. In that coming day, says the Lord, they will call me their friend instead of their master. O oh, my people, I will cause you to forget your idols. Their names will not be spoken anymore. At that time, I will make a treaty between you and the wild animals, and I will destroy all weapons, and all wars will be no more. Then you will lie down in peace and safety, unafraid, and I will bind you to me forever with chains of righteousness and justice, bounds of love and mercy, I will bind you to me in faithfulness and love, and you will really know me as you never have before. Our Psalter this morning is from Psalm 130, the first 13 verses and verse 22. I bless the holy name of God with all my heart, Yes, I will bless the Lord and not forget the glorious things he does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals me. He ransoms me from hell. He surrounds me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. He gives justice to all who are treated unfairly. He is merciful and tender towards those who don't deserve it. He is slow to get angry and full of kindness and love. He never bears a grudge nor remains angry forever. He has not punished us as we deserve for all our sins against him, for his mercy towards those who fear and honor him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. He is like a father to us, tender and sympathetic to those who reverence him. Let everything, everywhere, bless the Lord. It is how I bless him, too. This is the word of the Lord. Hymn number 84, we're going to sing verses 1, 4, 5, and 6. Our life shall 
We didn't miss that, Jody. <clears throat> the gospel reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Mark, beginning with the 18th verse. I'm reading from the Living Bible, and it's paraphrased. Some people came to Jesus and asked him why he and his disciples did not sometimes go without food as a part of their religious practices. Jesus replied, Do the friends of the bride and groom refuse to eat at the wedding feast? Should they be sad while the couple is yet with them? However, someday the happy couple will pass away, and that is the time when they, we should mourn. Besides that, going without food is a part of the old way of doing things, Jesus said. It is like patching an old garment with unshrunk cloth. What happens when washed, the patch pulls away and leaves the hole worse than it was before. Also, we know you know better than to put new wine in old wineskins. For when it ferments, it will burst out, burst the old wineskins, and the wine will spill out, and the old wineskins will be ruined. New wine needs to be placed in fresh wineskins. May God add his blessing to hearing his holy word this morning, and may we understand his truth for us yet this very day. The passage that we're looking at is when they begin to see the shift between the way Jesus was leading people to worship and honor God, to love him, and the old way of doing it. Now, last night, Donna, Sandy, and I, we watched uh, Noah from Sight and Sound. We had taped it, so we got to watch it again. And it reminds us of what the old ways of doing things were. From the time of Abraham which is kind of the beginning of Jesus or of God pulling people into his own realm in a very special way till the time of Jesus it was about 2,000 years or about the same amount of time between Jesus' birth and our own presence here. So there's a great deal of passage of time. And as we look at the Old Testament and the way they were worshiping God, the practices they did, first of all, they sacrificed an animal in order to ask God for his forgiveness of their sins. And they did that usually once a year, sometimes more often, but that was the usual practice. Even in the time of Jesus, they were still doing that. For as long as the temple stood, they were doing that. As long as the tabernacle stood, they were doing that. Also, they practiced certain rituals, like annually they had the Passover feast celebrating their freedom from slavery in Egypt. They also celebrated Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the day they prayed to God to forgive them for their sins. They also uh, wore, men wore prayer shawls wherever they went. It's interesting to see sometimes uh, 
some of the ways that even yet today, um, the people who are working, you can see the fringe of the prayer shawl out below the apron, or they're wearing one, and they wore skull caps. They also, when they were very young, went to uh, synagogue school. They had to learn all these kinds of things of what they were doing uh, as to what was God's requirement for us to worship him. And Jesus was raised in that. Jesus followed all those same practices of abstinence, of going without, of fasting, of setting aside a time when we're not going to eat certain things, or maybe not at all. I often think about the way that more, uh, the uh, uh, Muhammad, oh, I can't think of their names right now, the Muslims, uh, they go for a month fasting. They don't eat all day, they eat during the evening. <laughs> but they still go without what they normally would do. This was, this was part of setting aside oneself to be in the presence of God. Not do what I normally do because I'm in the presence of God. And now some people came to Jesus and said, you aren't fasting. You and your disciples aren't taking time out to not go, not eat, to go without food for certain periods of time. Why is that? Why aren't you following the religious practices that we all have been taught? You're teaching us. You're bringing us the word of God. You're, you're telling us about God's love for us, and yet you don't do the old ways of doing things. How many here studied the Heidelberg Catechism? Yeah. Are you teaching that this year, Butch? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we learned that strict statement of what the church is and how it operates and what the faith is and how it operates. How many of us uh, wore different clothes on Sunday than we did the rest of the week? Yeah, and how many of us did certain things, we didn't do certain things on Sunday that we did the rest of the week? Yeah, one of the ones that I remember for myself was sledding in this kind of weather. I was not allowed to go sledding on Sunday. That was a weekday event. I went anyways one time and hit a barbed wire fence with two points right just under my eye. I think I learned my lesson. But we, we've gone without things. Men would wear suit coats and ties to come to church. Women wear their uh, hats and all kinds of uh, uh, aware that this is Sunday. This is church. This is the day to worship God. The rest of the week, eh, not so much. Different. And here's Jesus saying, well, if you went to a wedding... Would you sit there and ask sackcloth and ashes? Would you bemoan and be moaning? No, you'd be celebrating. And this is what Jesus was trying to teach the people. That God is not a God of anger. God is not a, a God that we need to, you know, hide ourselves from. God loves us. God wants us to be in his presence. God wants us to feel close to him. We, God wants us to rejoice. Look at all that he's given you. Rejoice and be happy in it. Thank him for it. You don't have to go up and, you know, be little yourself and wail and pray that way. And this is what Jesus was teaching and trying to show people. That God wants us to rejoice in his presence. Not being afraid to, to celebrate his love for us. Not to oh, worry about him attacking us. He said, this is new. You wouldn't patch an old garment with a new patch 
and expect that when that garment was washed, the patch wouldn't make the hole bigger. No, you put on a new garment. Same thing with the wineskins. You're not going to waste the wine by putting in an old skin that's going to rupture when it ferments. You're going to put in a new wineskin. You've got to look at this, a new way of living. That's what Jesus was here to teach us and to help us understand. How many of our parents would recognize our worship service this morning? No. First of all, I'd say, where are your Sunday clothes? You know? We are changing. We're trying to live out the gospel. We're trying to say that church isn't something over here that we only do on Sunday, but it's something we live out all seven days of the week. We wear the same clothes because we are involved with people sharing God's love the way we are normally dressed Monday through Saturday. That's when we're supposed to be the Christians, not just this one hour here. We're supposed to be living it out and sharing it, not cowering. Not coming in, oh, God, please forgive me. We're supposed to believe that he has forgiven us and go celebrate that every day of our lives. May God bless us all. Amen.
Amen. What are our prayer concerns this morning as a church? Anyone have friends or loved ones that are facing COVID or? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes, Gordon. Okay, Gordon has a friend whose family's recovered from COVID. They're all doing well. And Donna had mentioned friends of ours that had all three of the members of the family had COVID. Um, we had two weeks of quarantine. Uh, we did well with that. So if there's none other, let's go before God in prayer. Gracious God, you call us to come to you as a parent calls a child, to feel enveloped by the love you have for us, to feel your arms of love around us, and to know that your heart and mind are open to all our concerns, both those that we can speak about and those that we carry deep within our heart. Maybe we can't even form totally into words. You've promised, and we've repeatedly found you to receive all these things that are on our hearts and minds, to envelop them, and to make response that is appropriate to our needs. For you haven't promised us that our days would be full of joy and happiness, that there would never be any issues that we had to deal with or concerns we had to encounter. But you did promise and you continue to promise that no matter what comes in our days, you are with us all the way if we would just follow the path you lay out before us. As we look around our world at our friends and loved ones, that's what's going on in our nation and what's going on between the nations of our world. There are times when we wonder where you are in all of that. And then we remember that you've given us each the right to do as we want. And when we look at things carefully, we begin to see that when we are selfish in our decisions, when we focus on ourselves and not on you, that's when we get into trouble. That's when things turn sour. Lord, we ask for your leadings and your guidance through the images we have of Jesus and his words and the sense of your Holy Spirit with us each and every moment. May we be open to all that you have for us. and May we share all that we receive with those we see around us, friends, loved ones, even strangers, may we respond in ways that they know of your love. This we ask in the name of him who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The world keeps moving on. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. I can't believe that it's already here. We will have a service here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. It will also be Zoomed. Uh, that begins our Lenten season. Uh, there's a couple of changes that we'll be making in our order of worship. For instance, we will sing the Lord's Prayer each time rather than praying it uh, just verbally. Um, we'll also have a different um, ending to our service. We now sing that 
words uh, to the tune of Edelweiss will now be singing to the uh, verse of Amazing Grace. And that'll be in bulletins. That'll be in your um, pew uh, beginning next week. Um, are there any other announcements we need to make at this time? Bell choir or anything? Well, we're scheduled for Tuesday, but we'll see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bell choir for Tuesday. Pending. Pending. <laughs> What comes out of the sky at us? Yes, Gordon. Yes, Ruthie. Yes, there will be no ashes uh, distributed. Um, COVID. Even our Catholic brothers and sisters are not imposing it on the forehead. They're they're dusting it into people's hair. And the first thing Donna said, in their hair? <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is different this year. So we'll talk about ashes and we'll talk about why they're important and things like that in this whole process, but we will not be imposing them. If not, we'll close with our last hymn. Now, I want to talk about it a little bit. Remember, joy to the world is not Christmas only. It's not just about the birth of Jesus. It's about all that he had to share with us, his words and his life and his death and resurrection. So let us be joyful to the world.